Now, the final fundamental that we need to talk about before we get to train is this. This is our disarming formula, and what this is going to do, it's going to give you a method that you can self-evaluate how you're doing on your techniques. It will also give you a way to evaluate any new techniques that you may want to add to your toolbox. There are four elements to any successful disarm. They got to be done in this order. Clear, control, disarm, and disable. Any of your successful disarms will have these elements and then we'll have them in the order that I just gave them to you. All right? And let's look at these one at a time. <clears throat> We're going to use a real simple inside strip technique just to demonstrate them. We're going to clear. Clearing is nothing more than getting you off the line of fire, away from the muzzle. All right? There are three ways we can clear the muzzle. The first is I can just snap my body sideways. All right? Gets me out of the way. The only problem is I'm kind of close here. And this may not be a problem at a low line attack, say to my, to my belly or my, my lower torso, but when you get the gun up here, you have a problem with muzzle flash. More comes out of the end of the muzzle than just the bullet. You get hot gases, ash, unburned powder. You get these in your eye, it's going to ruin your day. All right? So, again, we can just snap the body sideways. That's our first way. The second way is I can just take and push the gun out of the way. This isn't a bad way to do it. The only problem is, is that you are pushing the muzzle through at least half your body width. Remember what we said about reaction time. You may not have as much as you think. The last statistic I saw, about 90% of the disarming attempts, the gun goes off. So we want to try to, to limit that amount of time on target for him. The third way, the way I'm going to recommend, is that we combine the two. We are going to snap our body sideways at the same time we're going to push the gun hand out of the way. All right? Now notice in these techniques I am attacking the weapon in the weapon hand. I'm not necessarily attacking my assailant here. This is what gives lethality to his attack. This is what we got to take care of. All right? So first step, we're going to clear. The second step is control. And all we mean by control is I want to keep the muzzle from tracking back on to me. We're not working in a vacuum, all right? Now, if I'm going to try to take his gun away or prevent him from shooting me, he's probably not going to be real happy with that, and he's going to take steps to try to stop me. So we want to keep that muzzle from coming back onto us. <clears throat> the next step we're going to have is our actual disarm, all right? In this case, I'm going to punch the barrel parallel with the forearm, turn it back onto him, and rip it out. Now, one word of caution on your training partners. You'll notice on this particular trainer, we've removed the trigger guard and sanded it smooth. All right? Saves a lot of wear and tear on his finger. If you have a trainer with a full trigger guard, just be cognizant of it because you can't take the finger off. That's what it's designed to do. All right. The final piece of the puzzle, last D, disable, is going to mean different things for different people. I've cleared. I've controlled. I've disarmed. Now, disabling can mean, again, it's going to depend upon your circumstances. At this point in time, in most civilian or law enforcement environments, um, restraint is recognized and approved. All right? If you're in law enforcement at this point in time, you may be given verbal commands, tell them to get down on the ground, you know, handcuffing position. If, if it's a civilian environment, I may be looking to escape at this point in time, or now that I've got his weapon and I've cleared him out any malfunctions, I tell him to run away. All right. If, on the other hand, I've come back and I have his weapon, if I don't have one of my own, I clear a malfunction, which we're going to talk about in just a second, and he tries to aggress, now we're back in a deadly force incident. Or because I know how easy it is to take a gun away, and I don't know if he can do it or not. If he's aggressing me, he certainly is showing that he, that he has the intent to take the gun away from me. If he does that, we're back to square one, except he's probably going to be shooting when he gets the muzzle on me. 